Yes, so my name is Remo and I'm a web developer at Aeon here in Dublin. And I'm also the organizer of the Dublin TypeScript Meetup. So, uh, yep. Um, so I would love to see you in the Dublin TypeScript Meetup. We have one next week, but it's full, but hopefully for the next one. Um, yeah, and I also wrote a book about TypeScript that was published uh, last summer, and I'm working on another one. And, and today I'm going to be introducing TypeScript. I don't know how do you feel about me talking about TypeScript at the JavaScript meetup. <laughs> and a lot of people that love JavaScript is kind of like not really happy about the idea of working in TypeScript. I don't really know why, because I really love uh, JavaScript. And I've been there, uh, maybe the first time you use uh, TypeScript, you feel it was strange. So I'm, I'm going to try to show you why it's not that different and why you should use it. And hopefully I will convince you. Um, so the title of the talk is uh, Large uh, Scale JavaScript Application Development Made Easy. And I choose this title because I really think that TypeScript is not really a programming language, it's a tool that you use when you are developing uh, JavaScript. And this tool helps you to develop really large applications. So I would. I would like you to think the same way. I, would li I wouldn't like you to think that it's a programming language. It's really a tool uh, for JavaScript development. So let's move to what is TypeScript. Um, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So this means that everything you know about JavaScript is valid in TypeScript, plus a few extra things. And one of these uh, extra things, and the main one, in fact, is types. So the way in JavaScript we have dynamic typing and when you declare a variable, you don't express which type it is. Uh, with TypeScript, we do express the type. Uh, when you compile, it compiles to plain uh, JavaScript and it can run on any IDE, any browser, in any operating system or any mm, hosting service. And it's open source, it's in GitHub. Um, it's, it's mostly developed by Microsoft, but you can do a commit and a push, push request and they will accept it, this is good. And it's based on the standards. This is also important because in the past, we all hated what Microsoft used to do with the web, with things like VBScript and non-standard JavaScript, but this is actually really based on the MScript standards. Uh, a little bit of background about where TypeScript is now and where it came from and everything. So. We have JavaScript, uh, MXScript 5 version. That is um, the version that we have been using for the last few years. And then we have uh, already an early implementation of JavaScript 6, which uh, introduces classes and modules, introduces more things, but this is the two main features. And then we have TypeScript, that is mm, basically everything you know from MXScript 5, plus everything you know from MXScript 6, plus types. And then a few months ago, Google was uh, working on Angular 2, and they started to develop their own programming language, and it was called AdScript. Uh, but when they were working on it, they realized that it was so close to TypeScript. Um, so they contact Microsoft, and basically they say, uh, we're building the exact same thing, but we need two things that you don't have. We need annotations, and we need introspection. So the guys from TypeScript agreed to add those two things to TypeScript, and as a result of that, uh, Google killed the AdScript uh, project. And today, uh, Angular 2 is being developed with TypeScript. This is text there is from when they actually announced that. About how popular is uh, TypeScript today? It's not really popular, to be honest, uh, but it is growing a lot in popularity. We can see that the popularity is increasing every month. And last month, I think it reached 1 million downloads or something like that from NPM. Um, Friends of TypeScript, there's plenty of really large companies using it. Um, this is only some of them. And frameworks developed in TypeScript. We can kind of say that most, uh, most of the new latest frameworks are developed in TypeScript. We have Angular 2, uh, Ionic 2, Native Script, Aurelia, Dojo, the new version of Dojo, and last week, 
uh, cycle yes. Uh, the guy announced that he's going to switch uh, to TypeScript. And we also have Orex yes. So it's developed by Microsoft and is in developed in TypeScript as well. So I think we're going to see this increasing more and more. Surprisingly, it's uh, used a lot in the front end and it's not used a lot in the back end, uh, which is surprisingly because I will expect a Node.js application wi to be way larger than a front end application. So why we need TypeScript? Uh, basically what is happening in the last five years is that a lot of the complexity and a lot of things that we used to do in the back end now are happening in the front end. So we used to have maybe in the front end a few event handlers and just like really little code, like a few functions. And today we have um, clients for REST services, we have parsing, we have maybe some business logic, we have representation logic, we have event handlers, we have a, lo a lot of entities, a lot of modules, and a lot of communication uh, between them, and that's basically uh, complexity. Um, because complexity is not something difficult to understand. It's, it's basically when we have a lot of entities and a lot of relationships between them, so it's hard to track those relationships. Um, so TypeScript is trying to solve this problem, but it's not only TypeScript trying to solve this problem. You can also see frameworks like Redux that is trying to control the flow of the relationship between all the entities. That's because there's a lot of entities and there's a lot of complexity, so we need to do something to manage it. Um, so TypeScript is the future of JavaScript. Uh, this is one of the cool things. Uh, everybody is really excited about using today ECMAScript 6 features and transpiling into JavaScript 5. And three years ago, nobody cared about TypeScript and nobody cared about Microsoft three years ago, but you could actually use EX7 three years ago if you were using TypeScript. Um, and the cool thing is that when you compile, you can target to MXScript 3, 5, or 6. There's some limitation. For example, if you use uh, in MXScript 7, there's going to be asynchronous functions. If you compile that into, if you use that in TypeScript, you cannot compile to MXScript 5 or 3 today, but in version 2.0, you will be able to do that. Um, so I'm going to go now through some of the things that are uh, available in, in TypeScript, but they are also available in the, in the future versions of JavaScript. So the main one is classes. Uh, you can define a class. Everything here is just like MScript 6 except the type annotation. So see, for example, here we have a property called name, which is a string. In, in MScript 6, the property wouldn't be here, will be inside the constructor. So ba basically we will have this name and there's no type. That's the only difference. Or here, meters is type number. Uh, in, in JavaScript, we wouldn't have the type number. We, just, we, ju we will just have the name meters. Inherence because we have types and classes, we, ha we can in in do inherence. So this is much simpler and easier to read than in JavaScript 5. We have to manually copy the prototype from one object to another. So this is just makes our code more easy, easy to read and we have to do less boilerplate. Models, this is the XMScript 6 syntax. We can import something from a module we can also import uh, more than one thing from, an from a module. And another nice thing about um, TypeScript is that when you compile, you can choose which module system you want to compile to. So basically, you always write this new syntax in the left, but if you are using require yes, you can compile to MID, and if you're using no yes, you can compile to common yes. So you write one code that can be com transformed into any kind of m uh, module system. Uh, is uh, a synchronous, synchronous module definition is the from the required yes model system. We also have generators. Uh, generator is basically a function that you have a star there, and when you invoke one generator, it returns a iterator. So here we are in invoking the infinite infinite prompt, and we get the iterator, and then we can call the next method of the iterator. Uh, the interesting thing here is if you see this while true, it's a never-ending loop. 
and uh, we will we wouldn't get a, a stack overflow or crash there because we have the yield keyword so basically when we call next it will stop in the yield keyword and it will get out of the function this this breaks the way javascript used to work because in javascript when we when you start the execution of a function it will go all the way to the end and there's no way to stop the execution of the function but with the yield keyword you can again this is typescript but this is also javascript 6 and javascript 7. Uh, the nice thing about these generators when you see them for the first time they are weird they are hard to understand and you don't really see it's really hard to imagine when to use it and how but uh, it's interesting to know that they are necessary to the mm, to make support for the asynchronous functions so somebody has developed in the internet uh, a, a, a library that ha contains a function called async and the async function takes a generator as its argument. So here, for example, we are doing three Ajax requests. We're yielding to them, and it looks like it's synchronous code because there's no callbacks, there's nothing like that. So it's code that looks synchronous, but it's actually asynchronous. Uh, the next step is, instead of importing this async function from some library, is to actually declare a function and use the async keyword. So this is here we can say async function and we can instead of yield we can use await this is going to you can use this already in typescript if you're using node.js but if you're using a browser uh, you are going to have to wait for the 2.0 release because they can only support uh, mscript 6 with this uh, decorators this is one of the features that google asked for introduced in TypeScript from AdScript. So basically it's in top of a class, you can use a decorator, and a decorator is just a function. So here we have the class and we are applying the decorator, and here in the right side we are defining the decorator. So it's a function that takes uh, an array of strings and returns another function, and the f this second function takes a constructor so basically what is happening is I'm passing here to string, katana, and shuriken that are the types to be injected. Um, and when this gets executed, the, the class warrior is passed to the second function. And then we are annotating, we're creating an annotation. So this is used for generating metadata. Uh, and there's actually a, a standard object that is going to be the reflect object that is used to read and write metadata. So that's called the Metadata Reflection API. Uh, this is really powerful because this kind of tool, uh, thing of generating metadata is what we're going to use for things like dependency injection or for when you write a uh, unit test. You can have a, f a file with many functions. Some of them are unit tests, some of them are not. So you can annotate the ones that are unit tests. You can say add test and it will be like it will identify which functions are tests and needs to be run as a test and which, wa which ones doesn't. Um, so all that was a standard JavaScript, but we also have some things that are not a standard uh, JavaScript. The nice thing is that all these things are only at design time. So at room time they disappear. And why we need all these things is because uh, JavaScript is a dynamic programming language and that introduced some complexity because when you have a static type programming language, there's certain things that you don't have to worry about. For example, you don't have to worry about uh, the properties of an object uh, mutating at runtime. Uh, when you have a user dynamic type programming language, that kind of thing can happen at runtime. So there's way more things that you have to worry about. And to avoid that from happening, we have uh, static types. This is an example of something I found online. This is the kind of frustration that can create a, an error caused by the dynamic type uh, issues because it's really complex to know. You cannot assume things like this object is not going to change its properties at runtime. You, there's things that you cannot assume and makes it really frustrating sometimes. Um, so TypeScript goes beyond, it's a strongly typed and all these things are, the types are only at the same time. Uh, we have namespace. 
this is really old. This is from three years ago, um, before ES6 Mobius. TypeScript introduces this uh, namespace space keyword, and you could define namespaces. But this is going to be deprecated, so I'm just showing you because you can see it on projects on GitHub and things like that. But you shouldn't really use it. Types. This is uh, the main feature in TypeScript. So as I say, they are at design time only. Uh, we have time if inference. Basically, this means that the TypeScript compiler is able to detect the types. Uh, for example, if you say bar my number equals three, you don't need to say my number is a number. It will automatically detect that it's a number because you assign the value three to it. If you later on try to assign a string, it will tell you that it's wrong because you are assigning a string to a number. So you don't always have to actually uh, add the types. And the type system is actually called uh, optional type annotation system. So it's optional. Sometimes you have to because the in some cases the, the compiler is not smart enough to identify the types. Um, we have type guards. This is one of the things that is able to do the compiler. For example, here we have an if. Uh, type of sub property is a string. And then we are assigning an object. So uh, basically, if it's a string, an object. Sorry, where is this? Uh, get sub property. Sorry, here in the top. So property can be a string or a function. This is a union type, okay? An union type is basically when we use the or operator and we say that something can be of more than one type. So here we are doing a case if it's a string. So if it's a string, it cannot be invoked as a function because it's not a function. So the compiler is smart enough to detect that. Um, and what is a function, I cannot use the index. So this is the kind of errors that TypeScript can prevent you fr from doing in, in JavaScript. Um, another thing is the opposite of union types is intersection types. So in this case, we have said that something can be a string or a function, but we, we could also say that it's and. So we can say something like uh, it must be a vehicle and must be um, electric or something like that, two classes, you know? at the same time. Um, what the future might look like, this is uh, something from last week from the build conference. Um, this is an assumption that I do. I don't want to piss off anybody, but I think uh, everybody in the future will use a compiler, okay? Uh, even if you use a JavaScript compiler, basically I, I think it could happen that in the future we will write JavaScript and compile to JavaScript. Um, we have already projects like that. And in if that is going to happen, I don't see why we shouldn't use something that is more advanced than JavaScript, like TypeScript. And basically things that I can see, I can kind of guess that will happen is uh, a compiler is able to do optimizations, like in C++ or like in C Sharp or things like that, that we as developer don't do normally manually, okay? Like memory optimization and things like that. So this means that the, if we use a compiler, our JavaScript code will be more efficient and we will not be aware of it being more efficient. It will just happen, okay? Uh, also another thing that will happen is uh, reflection. We will be able to add metadata and the metadata will not be generated by us. It will be generated by the compiler. So if you have to generate the metadata yourself, I don't want to do that. I don't like that job. I don't like to be adding a strings to an object or things like that, okay? I prefer if the compiler do it for me. And about compression, uh, in, in JavaScript, when you have a function and you compress it, for example, the, the name of the function remains the same, but the arguments of the function are compressed. So if you have three arguments, it's called person, car, and whatever, they are compressed to A, B, C. You can do that because you know that the arguments are only, only used inside the function and it's safe to compress them, okay? What is not safe to compress is the name of the function. But if the function is private, it's safe to compress it. 
So the problem is that in JavaScript, we don't know if something is public or private. But in TypeScript, we do. Uh, that means that we can compress all the private stuff. And it will be way le l less heavy for the browser. So this is the reason why I believe uh, we will be doing typings. And I don't know if we will be doing with TypeScript or with JavaScript itself. Some people want to add types to JavaScript. Uh, but that's only my vision of the future. Um, I don't know if you would agree or not. Uh, and another feature is generics. So because we have types, we also have generic types. This means that we can use the, this kind of syntax like here, and we can define a list, but we don't know the type of list at the time of definition. We can define the type of list later on here when we actually consume the class. So in this case, it's a list of person, but in the other case, it's a list of animal. Um, and it's, it's basically the same class. The only thing is that we don't do castings, and it prevents us from doing errors. And if you want to learn more about TypeScript, here there is a few links that I like to share. The Playground, this is basically in the TypeScript website. You can go to Playground. Um, you can basically code here in the left side, and in the right side you get the JavaScript code. The nice thing here, for example, is you can see that private and types are not there at all. And this code in the right side is really, really similar to the kind of JavaScript that I would write if it was done manually. Uh, another thing is, for example, if I declare an interface, uh, you can see that in the right side there is nothing. Uh, basically, everything that is design time only is not available in JavaScript. It's just clean JavaScript and applies for private generic types. Generic types are not compiling to nothing, it's just a normal class. And basically the, the kind of code that Jav the TypeScript generates can be readable and if you regret switching, you can always come back. I don't think it will be a big deal. And also here you have uh, the ID that I use as Visual Studio Code, works with Sublime, we say it at the beginning, any ID with Atom, with whatever you like. But if you want to use Visual Studio Code, here I have a template project on GitHub that you can download and you can get up to speed faster. And there is a free book that is written by one of the best uh, TypeScript developers in the community. And it's free, it's available in GitHub. And that's it for me.